that Star Wars girl and today I am ironically going to be talking about Lord of the Rings because there has been a complete shit show that went down on Twitter between a very popular Lord of the Rings news site that a lot of YouTubers and content creators have been using as their sources for the new Amazon Lord of the Rings television show because apparently the one ring.net has gotten some kind of special access to the pre-production and you know, the filming of the show and because they have been the one that have been releasing all of the the new information about the Lord of the Rings Amazon television show. Now, ironically, I haven't been making very much content on my channel because I got inspired. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I was a little kid when Lord of the Rings was coming out. I remember just how packed the theater was when Return of the King came out. And I mean, me and my parents, we had to sit in the, like the almost basically the very front row. And I've been making a lot of content because I've been getting excited and hyped up for Lord of the Rings because I actually haven't been following this news because I wanted to be surprised. So I've actually been working on Lord of the Rings paintings, which you guys, if you want to see any of those progress pictures or uh, time-lapse videos, they're up on my art Instagram. And so I just got the inspiration to paint Arwen. And, you know, it's still a work in progress because it's an oil painting and oils take incredibly long time to dry. And so while I, I usually work on at least five paintings at a time, because again, working in oils is a, a very time consuming as well as slow process. And so I started painting Galadriel as well. And again, this is still a work in progress. So I'm a pretty big Lord of the Rings fan. I've been hyped up about it because I know it's coming, but I wanted to be surprised about this because Lord of the Rings is one of those franchises that I actually still had hope for until all of this went down. So. What's going to happen in this video is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you all of the tweets from the OneRing.net uh, Twitter account that started all of this. And then the way that they responded to people that asked them pretty reasonable, simple questions in respectful ways, how they responded and basically turned into the thing that we've seen happen with all show medias is, oh my gosh, we make a ridiculous statement and people question us with like reasonable questions and arguments and, you know, points with act with, you know, references to source material. What are they? Hobos and racists. So I'm going to show you guys, this is going to be kind of a long video because I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you all of the tweets and then I'm going to get into what happened with Nerd Erotics and Just Some Guy and how they basically uh, sent the One Ring.net running for the hills with, you know, their knowledge and facts and reason. So, strap in your seatbelts because I am going to dive right into this right now. So here's the tweet from the runwing.net that started all of this. Listen, we've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades and it's still wrong. Notice how they say we've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades and it's still wrong. Take a note because that's going to be important later. Whatever toxic arguments are being said now about Lord of the Rings fandom and adaptations is still the same trash that said Ian McKellen was the worst affront to Tolkien's legacy ever. Hashtag pride. They continue. Cognate, respectful debate on Tolkien is always welcome, but homophobic, racist, misogynistic trash is always cause for banning. It's not what Tolkien fandom is, wants, or welcomes. We used to be able to ban in the era of message boards and IRC, but in the era of social media, dot dot dot, the platforms can't keep toxicity out of their community. We can mute and block, but that's only for this account's feed. Twitter is not a community simply because it lacks anti-troll tools. Nasty people still show up in replies because their toxic friend subtweeted us. If you still think Ian McKellen is the worst and that Catholic Tolkien uh, would have never approved, I beg you to read more of Tolkien's books and letters. He was woke! 
stood against hate, embraced all cultures in life and fiction. It's why his books are translated in every language. If you think Ian McKellen gets a pass, but whatever Amazon is doing is a disgrace to Tolkien, please think more about your personal bias before tweeting. Our block button is very active, and if you retweet enable toxic voices in the name of free speech, you do not love Tolkien. Hashtag Pride gave us some of the greatest performances beyond all expectations. Now, when I saw this, I thought it was interesting because they said specifically, we've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades and it's still wrong. Now, when you are on the internet, you are expecting millions, because uh, there's millions of people on Twitter, right? You're expecting all of these strangers to take your word for it. Now. I know from personal experience, you can't expect random strangers, especially on the internet, to take your word for anything. You have to provide receipts for everything. So I saw this and thought, well, since you've been getting this for decades, you probably have some evidence of this, right? So I said, please provide receipts to back up these accusations, because if there are people that are going around making toxic arguments, that are being homophobic, that are just basically the uh, scum of the freaking universe, show that. Expose these fucking assholes. Because in my experience in the Lord of the Ring fandom, I have never once experienced that. I remember watching Lord of the Rings in the theaters when I was a child. I was a very young child when Lord of the Rings came out and there was none of that nobody was worried about ian mckellen being gay he was the best actor he is freaking gandalf the gray then later gandalf the white nobody cared a at least from my experience nobody was concerned what the actor's love life was like outside of lord of the rings it was of no interest to every anyone that i knew at least but i mean i cared more about the characters and the the storytelling and the world building i don't know what the heck other weirdos were thinking of but if this is going on then expose it especially if it's been going on to the run ring dot net since they said we've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades. I didn't think this was going to be a controversial tweet. Uh, little was I wrong. So I had to go and explain myself further. And I said, for those that don't understand, the One Ring account stated they've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades. I asked if they could please provide receipts of that. If it's been going on for decades, I'd expect them to have some. And I even had to highlight this here for them. And of course, the weirdos uh, <laughs> lost their minds. So here is a tweet thread that Lady Gravemaster was able to catch in a screenshot because naturally what, what happens when a weirdo loses their mind on the internet and uh, people call them out and say, hey, you sound pretty fucking insane. They go and they block everyone or they privatize uh, their tweets, which is of course what happens with all these weirdos. It, it's one of those things where if you're going to cause shit on the internet, at least have the fucking balls to stand your ground and stand up for yourself and what you apparently believe in since you were able to go on this long tweet thread but of course not no if you go and private your account you're a fucking pussy and a coward and i have absolutely no respect for you but so let's read this a uh, great thread question mark the one ring.net she literally calls tolkien racist as shit he fought in world war one talk about not knowing history and woke was weaponized from the get-go by people who started it uh, this has blown up in your face and you're proving you don't know or respect Tolkien. Now this is the tweet thread. So this is for Anaria. Blue check mark, if you're not surprised by that. So, this well-intentioned but nightmarish tweet, and I'm going off in private to talk about it because this well-meaning and wildly deceptful liberalism is why people of color and queer folks are so fundamentally unsafe in the Tolkien fandom! <laughs> Oh my god. We shouldn't sanitize stories or their authors. We shouldn't sanctify that which was harmful. Tolkien was a rich upper middle class cistist or sit sedist. I don't even know how to say this fucking word. White Catholic man in the 20th century England. He was racist as shit. Was probably homophobic. He deliberately based orcs on Mongols. He ca uh, His caste system and descriptions of the elves are explicitly colorist. His uh, esterlings, uh, Easterlings are literal racist stereotypes. His women, though written adoringly, were far and few between. My god, 
We do not have to erase uh, erase to engage. Read that again. We do not have to erase to engage. Ray! Oh my goodness. Uh, this is what we've lost the plot on. In all these years of rapid fire online discourse, in the digital binary, characters and works, and people are good or bad, are allowed to exist or de or or ah, or are damned. Jesus, acting like Disney, Tolkien, Star Wars, etc., were never racist. Doesn't help us. Entertainment is not our path to liberation. Pretending the racism away is not revolutionary. The author was problematic. The woke is problematic. Avoid it if you wish. Feel free to hate it. Engage with it if you wish. But do it honestly. Love it. But critically. With open eyes. What do white run accounts gain from doing shit like this. These blatant lies validate the tantrums of unhinged right ringers and are a slap in the face to the marginalized fans who already shit on the frankly white supremacist fandom. Then the one wing.net decided to reply. Great thread that stems from a core misunderstanding on the, wor the word woke, its history and its current weaponized usage. Then she replies, yeah, and also, I think it's really, really important that we don't erase harm from works and people we love. The real truth is that it doesn't matter whether Tolkien would have tweeted a pride flag emoji in support of McKellen, you know, the fact that so many brown and black people adore Lord of the Rings shows that acknowledging the bad doesn't mean we can't still love it. Times change, so do stories in threat. Now, then we get over to the nerdrotic section of this whole shit show. Because if you guys don't know, Gary from Nerdrotic is a pretty huge Lord of the Rings fan, and he has been covering all of this Lord of the Rings news with the new Amazon TV show very closely and has made a few videos on it that get a lot of traction because uh, Gary is kind of popular and people tend to trust him and like what he has to say about the things that he talks about because he is uh, a very knowledgeable guy, very entertaining, has great content, has a great channel, and uh, was actually the one that Lord of the Ring.net was referring to over in their very long uh, tweet thread that talked about, you know, toxic friend subtweeted us. So uh, this is what Gary from Nerdronic had to say about this tweet thread. He said, that's strange. I was obsessively following every article, post, thread, and didn't see any of this. Maybe there was a couple, maybe a few, nothing worth taking seriously. This is how it begins. Throw fans under the bus for access, disappointed but not surprised in the least. And of course, they responded. Ignorance does not preclude fact. Ian McKellen wrote on the subject. Gary followed up. I'm aware of Ian McKellen's story. You stated this with, listen, we've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades. Ian McKellen is an inspiration and universally loved. Instead of pointing that out, you choose the route of the straw man to get some attention. They respond, straw man. Ian McKellen, in his own words, again, with the same link that everyone has been showing. You seem to have a lot of homophobes and racists in your replies with your misuse of straw man. Da 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 da! Now, naturally, this tweet got a lot of attention because they basically called everyone that follows Gary or everyone that was pointing out the same thing that me and Gary pointed out because me and Gary both pointed out the fact that they were referring to themselves uh, in their tweet. You know, we've been dealing with homophobic comments for decades and it's still wrong. They referred to themselves and then threw in Ian McKellen at the end. Uh, me, Gary, and a lot of other people pointed that out and they decide to say, oh, well, that's straw man. It's like, it's not a straw man when we are literally going off of the words that you said. So a lot of people got upset about this because a lot of Lord of the Ring fans are like, what the fuck? You're calling us homophobes and racists. 
What the fuck? Then uh, there's another thread from Gary. It says, respect the lore. Uh, decoded, respect the lore. See you on YouTube. And it's a link to this tweet. This tweet is no longer available, but Gary included the screenshot. So this is from uh, just some guy. I have this pulled up so that way I was able to zoom in. And it says, ignorance does not preclude fact. Ian McKellen wrote on the subject. And just some guy, if you guys do not know, uh, he is a man of color. And uh, he is actually pretty good friends with Gary. He's been on Friday Night Tights a few times. And he does. He has a channel where he talks about comics and stuff. So go check him out if you haven't already. And so he jumps in and says, are you talking about this? Some chat rooms 20 years ago? Come on, no one thinks Amazon's show will suck because the actors might be gay. People think it'll suck because Amazon isn't going to respect the lore. And Lord of the Rings, you know, the OneRing.net responds with, respect the lore is becoming coded language for racist perspectives on a text that never describes color. Holy fucking shit. And like clockwork, the mystery to why this tweet was deleted, aside from its completely tone-deaf statements, just some guy knocks it out of the fucking park and completely owns their moronic asses. He responds with, yeah, I'm black and I don't use coded language. I say exactly what I mean. Tolkien described what Eldar and Edain looked like multiple times in his book. I suggest you put down the phone and read the book since apparently you never fucking have. Mike fucking drop just some guy. Yes! Own them. These people that are supposedly the biggest Lord of the Ring fans out there that run an entire website about Lord of the fucking Rings apparently don't pay fucking attention to the content they are supposedly obsessed with and love and are <laughs> the main authority on. <laughs> Honestly, if you are not subscribed or following just some guy, go freaking give a guy a follow just for this fucking statement. He is fucking awesome. But guys, guess what? Y you would think after this that uh, it would have ended here. But guess what? It didn't. It continues. And then with the tweet where Gary rightfully calls them out and had to include a screenshot since they went back and deleted the tweet, they respond with, feed the angry nerd content machine. Enjoy the revenues. Holy fucking shit. This shit show just got 10 times worse. Gary, you know, nerd rotic? Called it over a year ago. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Giving into shill tactics by calling fans who supported your website for years homophobes and racist is beyond pathetic. You expose your true colors, the one ring.net. This is a screenshot of a podcast that Gary did over a year ago. Now, this is up on his other channel, Nerdrotic Live, so it's not as many views as he actually got when it was live, because he re-uploads his live streams. But he called it from the beginning. You know, is the is Lord of the Rings next? Is it the next one to go woke? Are they going to try to destroy Lord of the Rings? Unfortunately, the answer was yes. With everything I have shown you guys. With the way that the OneRing.net is reacting to fans. Now, for years there's been nothing for Lord of the Rings. Since, since the Hobbit movies come out, there has not really been any news with Lord of the Rings because there hasn't been any content being made for it outside of specialized figures and merchandise. So what's been keeping the One Ring.net alive? The fans. The fans that go and read their articles. The, fan that go, the fans that go and support their website. And what did they do? Just like the rest of the show media, they called us homophobes and racists simply because they were stupid and didn't know how to properly word a tweet if it wasn't what that they meant that they were referring to themselves here. Which is clearly what they did mean. They were referring to themselves, hence the fact that they said we've been dealing with this because they go on in this tweet thread in their own fucking words and talk about how Twitter is not a community and th how they have to deal with blocking people and blocking toxic, you know, toxic f friend subtweeted us. Gary rightfully called them out on their straw man by trying to turn this around and make it about Ian McKellen when it was clearly them venting about uh, how they have to block toxic people.
people. It's like, okay, so a person is toxic because they asked you for receipts, because they asked you to prove these claims that you're making, uh, and then you try to hide behind Ian McKellen and e the stuff that Ian McKellen actually went through. What a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, Gary was right to call them out. Gary and just some guy... Everyone else that's been calling them out on it, rightfully fucking so. They just straw manned to get attention, and then they go and fall back behind Ian McKellen. What pieces of fucking shits. Ugh. Imagine being so fucking pathetic that you take Sir Ian McKellen's real-life experience and try to capitalize on that because it's Pride Month, and trying to take his actual story to go manipulate so that way you get woke points and to tell your sob story because oh my god homophobic misogynistic racist people comment on our website and it, it, you know they're not actually saying homophobic stuff they're just actually presenting facts and actual arguments and being completely reasonable but we're gonna use we're gonna fall back and hide behind the shield that we have of ian mckellen which i mean gary rightfully fucking called them out so did just some guy i think so did i i i asked them for receipts i said hey if like you said it's been happening to you for decades like i just showed you guys with those tweet with with the thread they said they said it's been happening to them then they go they Bring up Ian McKellen at the end. But then they go and go and complain about how we can't, you know, basically block everyone from our Twitter. It's not a community. So it really was about them. It wasn't about Ian McKellen. But then they try to use Ian McKellen as a straw man argument to hide behind and call anyone that questions them homophobic. Which Gary called them out on it. I called them out on it. Just some guy called them out on it. A lot of people just call, uh, called them out on it. And what do they do? Ah, you're all homophobic and racist! Ray! It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. This is what happens when you sell out to access Hollywood. Is that you sell your soul to them so that way you can get early access to things. So that way people will go and read your website. But then you become the actual thing that you, you know, that you swore against. It was a fan one website that, you know, the, the, the fans, other fans that read these fans articles kept alive for years while there was no content coming out for Lord of the Rings. Yes, there were special releases of the movies in The Hobbit. Yes, there was toys and merchandise that would come out. But when you don't have new content, you kind of, you slowly run out of things to write about, which if you actually are creative, you could write about Lord of the Rings for freaking ever. I mean, there's a college course that you can take in Tolkien. So if you're actually creative, you could spend the rest of your life writing about Lord of the Rings and you know, you can do art of Lord of the Rings. You, there's, for a creative person, you don't have to sell your soul to be able to create content, which is... Uh, apparently exactly what happened and I mean just some guy called it out it's like hey you guys obviously didn't even fucking read the book if you didn't if you weren't aware that there was descriptions of these actual characters and they had to go and delete the tweet it's ironic isn't it and the ironic that the people that call everyone names are actually the bad guys in and of itself it, it, it blows my mind but it never ceases to fail it happens every single time so I know that this was a long video I do hope you enjoyed it I've spent um you know a lot of time going and collecting everything and getting all of this uh prepared for you guys if you guys haven't go follow nerd erotic on twitter go follow just some guy on twitter go subscribe to their youtube channels they create great content they're huge lord of the rings fans that are actually covering this lord of the rings news like I showed you guys earlier Gary called this shit a fucking year ago when it's like is lord of the rings next we lost star wars we lost star trek they lost doctor who is lord of the rings next yeah obviously it, it it fucking is if this is the way that it's going so i just wanted to collect all of this information to show you guys on how this all went down on twitter i'm kind of glad that i haven't been following it and i wanted myself to be surprised because i did get inspiration from you know this thing that i grew up loving and now it's like is there any hope for the TV show? I don't fucking know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and smash the like button. If you didn't, oh, thank you so much for watching this far through. And until next time, everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. Hey everyone, if you'd like to help support the channel, check out my Etsy, where I sell prints of my original oil paintings and drawings that range from horror villains, heroes, and your favorite Star Wars characters. I also have an art channel uh, where I post time lapses and tutorials, and also if you want to see work in progresses, I also have an Instagram dedicated specifically to that. 
Then finally, you can check out my Teespring for wearable merch and all platforms are listed down below in the description of this video. So thank you so much everyone and have a great rest of your day.